Alexa, what are my notifications? Hummingbird Helix 7 has arrived. Oh yeah. All right, so we just got the Helix 7 by Hummingbird. Pretty excited about this. We've been running a an older Hummingbird unit that's like back from the 80s or 90s. I'm not even sure if they really pick anything up to be honest with you. So this has mega side imaging, mega down imaging. Uh, it's got GPS so real, and sonar. So I'm really super interested in it and I'm excited to put it in my boat. We're gonna do an unboxing here and we're also going to install it. Maybe this will help you when you decide what brand you'd like to go with and how easy the installation is or how hard it is. We're gonna find all that out. So let's get this thing unboxed. Uh, you know, the crazy thing is, is I was looking for the Helix 9 and I think for my boat, it's just gonna be a little too big. I don't know that it'll fit in my console. My boat's a John boat. It's just a bass tracker, so I'm not really sure if, oh, it's a lot bigger than I thought, body-wise. Here's what we're looking at. Yeah, so this is the seven inch screen. Let me pop it out of this bag here. Yeah, so it's a seven inch screen, but the body of the unit comes out to almost 10 and a quarter. You only have about 11 inches in my console to use this at. I did purchase a mount also that I can mount it up and be able to turn it back and forth. But let's see how it fits in the console first and go from there. It's beautiful. So the mount, this is a mega side and mega down transducer. All my wiring. Okay, I guess that's what hooks to the battery. That's my transducer mount. And then we get some uh, paperwork, which uh, we'll look at a little bit. I'm pretty sure this is pretty cut and dry as far as how we're gonna install it, but that is beautiful. I mean, I was really thinking when I ordered the seven that it was gonna be kind of dinky, but this is great. Uh, I can't wait to get it installed. So let's get to that part. Let's get installing. So you can see we're using the old style hummingbird fish finder that came with the boat. And I'm familiar with these actually. I have had these on some of my other boats in the past and they seem to be okay. I mean, I didn't really catch a ton of fish because of it, but you know, it would give me the thought that there was something underneath me. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna see if this Helix 7 will fit in this space here. So we gotta remove some of this stuff. We're gonna take the shield off, set it in, see if it'll fit well. If it doesn't, I got the mount that we could mount it out here and I'll be able to kind of turn it back and forth, which would be a good idea too. To give you an idea of the sizing, that's pretty big. I mean, it could go there and that wouldn't be too bad and maybe I can get it to flip back and forth so both people could see it. My dad, especially whenever he's on the boat, he's like, oh, what's on the fish finder? So we'll be flipping this back and forth a million times trying to see where the fish are. I don't want to do that to this expensive head unit. I mean, this thing, it was not exactly cheap. Probably by the time I purchased everything, you know, we were just under one case. That's a lot. Amazon has them on sale. I looked around, it seemed like Amazon had them for about $50 less than everybody else. So I decided to go with Amazon. So let's get some of this stuff off and see how it's gonna fit in. <laughs> Everything's coming off pretty nice, which is nice. Okay, good. And we'll clean that up. Okay. Get this all wiped down. So we're going to put the bracketry on there. This is going to set in this area here. Oh, wow. That's going to fit very tight. So it's gonna be some adjustment here to kind of find out what fits best for your boat. Every boat's gonna be a little bit different. Yeah, that's gonna be super tight. I just don't know. I mean, it looks good there and all. 
that wouldn't be bad. It certainly limits it to just, just the back fisherman and the driver, which I'll be honest with you, when I'm out fishing for the most part, I'm usually up front and operating the front trolling motor. I wouldn't really get much of a view on this. This might be the way to go. Let's go, let's go grab the mount. We ordered that too and see what the mount, the difference with the mount would look like. This is by Ram Mounts. This is Ram Mounts here. Oh, and I'm gonna tell you guys, this mount is no joke. This is all aluminum. So it's pretty, pretty heavy, pretty strong. I think there were some other mounts that were like 20 bucks, but I gotta tell you, I think they were made out of plastic and this mount was almost $60. This mount is uh, what I think is gonna be the way to go. This is very heavy duty. So one of the things I'm coming across with the the Ram mount is the absolute lack of hardware they gave me. Just like a lot of projects to end up doing, there's gonna be a little bit of here's and there's with fabricating it to make it work for your application. I think as far as putting in the belt and base, that could be just uh, self tappers. I'm gonna need some bolts and nuts to attach the Helix 7 to the base right there. They do not send hardware with these, so keep that in mind if you are going to get one of these RAM bases for your Hummingbird. Let's get this thing off here. This is the original Hummingbird. And we just actually tightened this up. All right, boy, that wiring's tight. So let's get underneath the dash and see if we can find what we need to say. Okay, so you can see the wires coming down this one is the power line. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. If you can see this, I'm sorry. So we have this little line coming out of this piece here. See the black piece right here coming out? So that's gonna be this little thin line and the little thin red line. And this is going to be our fuse for that. So we definitely wanna keep it fused. So that line runs up in here and goes up into that spot there where, the, where it's coming from. So. Let's get this uh, undone, and we know that the last fuse will be our fish finder fuse. When I tell you there is not much room to work here, uh, it's not a joke. <laughs> this line's going to feed back to the transom. Let's just get this nice and straight. Make sure there's no knots on it, so when we pull it through, we're going to use this wiring, okay? The old wiring, we're going to knot this or tie this to the new line. This way we can wire it through the boat area. Okay, let's let's start pulling the wire out. And this should just pull out quite nice. And that's it, all right. Got a clean base, well actually it's not a clean base, but we have a base that's got no obstructions. Uh, let's clean this off. So here's our, our mount here. This will go kind of in this area here. Probably enlarge that hole. This will be our hole size. Let's see what the base is going to require. I don't think there's a front or a back. That was my fear that these were going to be a little too thick. It would have been really nice if this uh, Ram product came with the hardware, but it did not. So we may have to take this along to Lowe's with us to get the right bolts and nuts. Okay, here we are at the Lowe's. Um, so this is probably going to be a little embarrassing for me. I've never really filmed in the public. So let's uh, let's give this a shot. We're gonna pick up our stuff here at Lowe's. Okay, so here we are at the stainless steel counter. Yeah, that's nice. And that's got the beveled edge, so that's gonna fit right in there. Yeah, that's gonna be nice, okay gonna go with these now would you look at this craziness this is the whole hot dog in the bun situation they give you 12 hot dogs and 10 buns right what's up with that 12 hot dogs 10 buns they make you buy more buns so we got all our stuff here we got our silicone and we got our screws I got a couple other things for another project I got going on so it's now time to make our way back to the boat So we got this bracket attached, so now we're gonna put that over here, see where this fits best. Yeah, that would be good. You have to cut a hole 
about this size. I think a pole saw that we could use for this. Oh, we actually need to go a size bigger, which could be a problem. So what I've done here is I've actually hooked this to a drill. This is a Dremel head, and we just want to open this up a little bit, and I think this will do the trick. We don't really need too much, so I didn't want to go too crazy. You know, the crazy thing is here, I was worried I was going to go much too deep. It's perfect. Next up is mounting this bracket. And the beauty of this is I can get this look here for whoever's up front and be for the console. So I think this is going to work out quite nicely. Okay, so now I've got this ram bolt completely loose. For your wiring entry hole, you want to use a one inch hole saw or hole drill bit. For your screws, you want to use a 3 16 drill bit. This is where the old transducer is. My first thought of pulling the wires through underneath the dash and through was a great idea. The only trouble is, is the transducer is fast to the wiring. I'm going to cut the wiring on the transducer tie my wiring onto the plug that's going to go into our new Hummingbird Helix 7 and we'll basically just drag that right through the, the work and hopefully we won't lose our end halfway through because that would be uh, unfortunate. We are going to cut our line here and we're going to use this as a pole. We want to tape this really well so we want to get a coil here and we're hoping that this is going to do the trick. Doesn't have to be pretty, just got to hang on. And we want to make sure that we protect those prongs. So we're going to make sure that that gets taped over really well. Don't worry about overkill. Overkill's good. This was the way to go. Opening this little section up made for all the difference. So let's get the rest of the feed through. Oh, we got it. There it is. So we're here where we need to be. Here's what the hummingbird is going to look like mounted. It's just a little big for this area here where I really wanted to put it. But this gives me the option to be able to kind of run it this way and be able to give the front angler some information as well. We start to run our transducer. I've got the wiring mounted, the fuse plate, and we just want to tighten that fuse plate up. It's a little loose, so. Let's go on under here and take a look. You can see this is just kind of sloppy. So I started to do some editing on this video and I'm gonna tell you, I'm sorry if uh, we go in the weeds a little bit. Okay, so that's completely plugged in now. I got plenty of wire here to be able to pull up and down when it's time to make those switchovers. That looks real good to me. Very pleased with that. That gives me enough space, like I said. So here's what we're gonna be looking at once in a while. We're gonna be making this change. I wanna know that I can make this change. Plenty of wiring to come around and in the back. This is keeping everything nice and snug. I mean, that's perfect. All right, let's get to the transducer. They have an Allen key over here. Regular flathead screwdriver on this side. Okay, so slide that down. Just flathead screwdriver. All right. Got that bracket off. Sil old silicone here. I'm gonna try to flatten that out best I can. I'm not really sure if this is the best spot for the transducer. That's it for this. As I was hooking up the transducer, I noticed the wiring's gonna be dangling way out. So I was like, what the heck is with that? So I went out and I got the paperwork and as I got the paperwork, it's telling me that if I put the transducer to the right side of the boat, the thrust from the motor will push to the left side of the boat and could create some interference for the information it's going to send back to us. Our speedometer is right about where we would like to locate that transducer unit. Based on what it's saying, the transducer 
is a better better fit out here on this side of the boat i'll be honest with you a lot of times i forget to even put this thing down but i'm gonna see if i can somehow get enough line to put that on the other side and the more i looked at it the more i said this doesn't look like wiring so all it is is really it's just a flow meter so it has water rush in and it measures the speed of the water that's coming in up to the speedometer and it'll give you a speed so what i'm going to get is a little connection here so i can run that plastic line a little further really simple very liberal when it comes to how much silicone we put on all right that looks pretty good to me okay so we're basically gonna dummy mount this here and we want this as level as possible so they're saying 15 inches from from this spot to the area we got our motor straight here you're going to take a measurement from the motor to the area and huh, we just don't have enough boat here it's telling me i need to be way out here we're just going to compromise we're going to put it where this is i don't think it's going to make or break us i really don't i mean we're we're going to be coming out of the water so we're kind of like damned if we do damned if we don't i want to get a mark on here so i'm actually just pushing right into the hole and see if i can get that to kind of even go in a little bit into the boat transducers going on here so that's going to snap down so that's going to come a little lower so we're going to leave that adjustment out i thought there was something a little weird here have you ever noticed when you buy things they always include an allen wrench i'm going to need a drill I'm going to need a screwdriver. I'm going to need self tappers. There's no way in heck that a guy who's got all that stuff installing this will have an Allen wrench. So we better include one. Of course we have Allen wrenches. We've got everything. We're, we're tool time guys. We're the guys that do it ourselves. If we didn't have an Allen wrench, we would have sent it out to someone else today. So I just thought that was interesting. So I kind of feel bad not using their Allen wrench. <laughs> that looks pretty good. This is going to snap in don't fear silicone silicone is our friend okay, so it looks like we're going to need a few clips for that it looks like we have another trip to the hardware stores it's going to be it for this part of getting this hummingbird set up we're getting close so just hang in there and we'll get everything done and this boat will be ready to rip